Hello guys, the Excel sheet that we are talking about in this video is a work in progress, but we felt like we still wanted to put it out there as soon as we had something that can be handy to use, um, because we do think that the best time to use it is right now when creating a Game Week 1 team. So with that said, let's start the video. <music> Hello Gents Club and welcome to this video. As you see, it will be a different kind of video in the way that three of us Gents are going to listen and enjoy our Excel Gurus uh, Sam's lecture in how we can choose the best lineup and the players based on projections. So we will not talk about how we reach those projections, but we will uh, look at when you have come to the projections, uh, how you can uh, form the best optimal squad and uh, later on we will discuss the best optimal formation but for this video we have investigated what is the best possible 343 and uh, yeah so let's all uh, watch and learn sam uh, take it off thank you oscar um yeah so i'm just gonna run through a really quick uh demo of the kind of model that we've been working on uh in terms of trying to get the computer to do some of the hard work for us and calculating the most number of points we can get out of an, a set 11 of players. Um, it's definitely something that's still to an extent a work in progress. I'll kind of talk through some of the limitations of it as I'm also talking through the benefits of it. But just to give you an idea of how it works so far, um, I'll go through what I've got. Um, so the model itself is actually based off um, a similar kind of projection device that was developed for an NBA fantasy game. Um, premise being the same, having a certain salary cap that you have to fit for your whole team, which kind of equates to our price and value of players, and then obviously slightly different positions that you can fill with a certain degree of flexibility. Um, so what we've got to work with here is we've used the projections for the first eight weeks that Oscar's provided me. Um, and I will just sort of use the model to kind of, it'll go through and it'll calculate what's the most optimal way we can set a team up to kind of get the most points out of every single player for their price. Um, so there's, there's only really two, uh, two shoots to the model. It's very easy to use. There's the projections one, which you or you can, you know, use the projections that we have built in. If you subscribe to uh fantasy football scout or fix you can use their projections you can also just type in your own projections uh what we'll do when we kind of send out the sheets to those who are interested in giving it a try is i will make sure to lock down any cells that kind of need to be not touched so, so it's not the model doesn't break but you'll still have a fair amount of flexibility to edit where you want to which um you know if you put certain weight on different players then that'll kind of allow you to do that without being constrained by what we've got in here um so the projection sheet is as simple as having the data for all the players entered and then, as, as mentioned, the, the actual projections per week, which, which you can change at your leisure. Uh, and then the other sheet is just the model itself. Um, again, this kind of largely just pulls through the data from the other, uh, from the other projection sheet. And then there's a few key things you can kind of enter in to sort of set things up a little bit flexibly. So the first... The first choice, which also unfortunately man manifests itself as a limitation at the moment, is that um, what we currently have is a, a model that will build the, uh, the best points in a team for each of the formations. So what it won't do currently is tell you the best formation. Um, so unfortunately, you'll, you know, you, you, there's only eight to try, so hopefully you can get a good idea and there might be. Like personally, I don't believe in going one up front and I don't believe with going five at the back. So that actually eliminates four of the formations for me immediately. I, I solely kind of keep to three, four, three, three, five, two, four, three, three, four, four, two. Um, so that's that's what you have in there. Um, another option is to edit your transfer budget. Obviously, right now, that's not going to be something that matters to anyone because we're all starting with 100 million. But when it comes to wildcard time, which is another big time that this will be uh, a really useful tool, I think, 
obviously hopefully we've we've kind of enhanced the value of our team a little bit so if you've got an extra million or something you can put that in there and you won't be constrained by just using the 100 uh, 101 million that's where i think this at the moment differs because i know that uh fantasy football fix certainly provide like they tweet out an algorithm 11 every week um obviously that only counts for that one week not for a period of weeks um but i think it's also only set to 100 million so hopefully this gives you a little bit more flexibility on top of that um one other thing you can change and again this is kind of where you have to make your own choices i haven't built the model to do this for you but this is one of the things is i don't think there's value in doing it really um is choosing the value of your bench so again i this will link in with the with your formation which might be why we kind of keep it as a a model that you choose your formation rather than letting it choose the formation for you um, so I uh, typically run a three-four-three. Three. I like at the start of the season to have it the bench stripped as bare as I can. So I would choose two four-point-five million defenders. Uh, sorry, choose two four-point-zero million defenders, a four-zero million goalkeeper, and a four-point-five million uh, midfielder or forward. Uh, it would be four, uh, midfielder in the case of three-four-three. Three. Right. Okay. So yeah, uh, just. Um, just a little update so we, we can see the screen as we kind of go through it. So as mentioned, we've got the formation, um, which you can choose, the transfer budget you can choose, your bench value you can choose. These all kind of calculate into the what Excel does when you actually run the program. You can also, we haven't kind of set it up yet to happen, but it's a very easy fix to set how many game weeks. Um, all that will do is it will look back at these projections and then it will pull through the certain number of weeks. At the moment, it's pulling through the total. Um, so although it says six, I can change it to eight. It's not going to make any difference because we're looking at eight game weeks, but at least that makes it a little bit less confusing. Um, there's no need to worry about what's going on here. Things are happening. Um, it, might, it might be that I just hide that and lock it for when we send the sheets out for people to use because it's just kind of getting in the way and it, it makes it remove the risk of people kind of changing stuff that will break the model um other than that customization wise that's pretty much it um i'll talk about something else when we've run it um but uh, yeah other than that we'll just give it a go and see how it comes out with um when it when it sort of runs its simulations we'll see the team end up here and then i guess we can kind of talk through it and the pros and cons of it and if there's anything else we need to discuss so um, all I need to do is go to add-ons and solver, which is where all the magic happens. Um, here is where the constraints are, so not, not to worry about them, but this is just telling it what to do and making sure it constrains within the budget and the formation. Um, uh, as I said, we've set it as 3-4-3 four, as three, four, three for the first trial that we're going to run here. So let's see what we come out with uh, and just talk about it, really. And hopefully it looks relatively sensible and we're not picking... Uh, I don't know, Alexis Sanchez. <laughs> so what have we got here? Okay, so what we what the solver has thrown us out is a three four three, which is pretty heavy in defense, but quite balanced overall. Um, Pickford in goal, which I guess we can understand given that Everton's starting fixtures are very strong, and he's not the most expensive goalkeeper. So that's an interesting one to me, but uh, you know. I can understand why it's done it. Um, we're actually seeing the three Liverpool defenders here, um, the three most premium options in that defence, being Alexander-Arnold, Robertson and Van Dijk. Again, we know their fixtures are strong and their assist potential is very high as well as their clean sheets. Um, obviously, Van Dijk a goal threat as well, although he did pick up an assist in the community shield earlier. Um, Midfield-wise, interesting to see the two Man City uh, midfielders as opposed to Salah. Uh, one thing, again, I should mention at this point, we're still trying to work on is the uh, is enabling it to take into account the points as a captain uh, would get. So this might be why we're seeing these two kind of, if you almost want to call them semi-premiums, as opposed to a really expensive guy in De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva. Um, it might even be that captain points are not going to be enough to put Salah in this team with obviously the downgrade you'd have to do outside of these two and it would then be removing your ability to take the uh, the three Liverpool defenders but as it is the, the, we've got these two guys in here uh, Anthony Martial 
Um, this is probably more a value thing. Seven million, if he can tick along with consistent points, playing potentially the number nine role or even out wide. If he's playing most minutes, I think he will be getting a lot of points, which I can see why they've selected him. Uh, same for Barkley, good value, I guess, at six million if he's starting the games. Again, that's kind of where you take your own decisions, I suppose. If you if you really don't believe he's going to start, you can you can check the points it's projected him at four, and you can kind of go back and just make the change yourself, and then it will come out with a different result. Um, so here's our kind of real premium guy being Aguero. Um, so probably if you modelled it by this, you'd be captaining him most weeks. Um, also Wilson and Jota, who fairly cheap, um, hopefully provide good value. Um, so yeah, I think you know when you look at the team. It certainly seems like one that will score points. It might score a little too consistently and not not explosively enough. Um, is the is maybe the caution that I could give. But again, hopefully once we have the captain uh, the captain situation figured out, we can we can fix that. Um, I'm just going to work on a couple of bits of the interface up here. This is all actually displayed further down, but not it's just in not quite a uh, friendly manner. So here we have, so we're projected 446, 447 points over eight weeks, which off the top of my head is about 53, no, about 55, 56 points a week, which I guess makes sense. Obviously, we're not including any captain points there. So you're probably putting that about, pitching it at about 60 points a week by projections, which I think most people will consider to be a fairly good uh, benchmark for for kind of a team that's going on through the season. Obviously, you'll have a few chips and wild cards on that. So if you were to extrapolate that across 38 game weeks, I think it would it would sit you about where you'd want to look um, points-wise. But obviously, we can check that. Uh, in terms of clearing and starting again, it's very easy if you just hit the reset button. Everything goes back to normal. Uh, this vanishes from over here. Um, just to say one small thing on it is you could also, in theory, use it for game week by game week transfers. Um, Again, I'll probably try and improve the interface on this, maybe so you can kind of enter your team in a slightly less uh, less onerous way. But at the moment, what it would be doing is if you manually selected uh, ones for all the players you had in your first 11, um, obviously, again, enter your actual bench value and your transfer budget in here. So say you've got, you know, you want to make a couple of transfers, you could select the nine players that you want to keep in your team for sure, uh, and then leave the other, leave everything else as a zero, run the simulation, the extra two it will, that it will add into your team will obviously be the two players that combined would give you the extra most amount of points over the next few weeks. Again, you can combine, you can compare that by putting all the ones in for the players that you've currently got, and that will say, okay, so at the moment your team is projected to score 307 points over the next five weeks. With these transfers, it'll be projected to score 316 or whatever. So, you know, that's the other way you'll be able to use it as as the weeks go on, rather than for just a wild card or for a, a um, you know an initial team setup tool. Um, yeah, as mentioned, there's a, there's a few things that still to come with it, and we're hoping to make it better. But you know, we've we've only been, we've been working for it on it for a short amount of time, and I think I think we're in a good place to uh, take it forward and be something that people can use to you know to, to help optimize their teams where possible. It sort of follows what people think now that heavy defense might be good because it puts a lot of emphasis on like bringing in Van Dijk, Alexander Arnold, and Robertson. That's a lot of money invested in defense, and I find it interesting that it, even like if you put it in four four two, it probably would have waited in another Laporte premium maybe. defender, maybe Laporte, maybe. yeah. So I find that interesting, actually. Yeah. But that might be how it projects in the long haul, I don't know. I haven't played around with it. So, Like, for instance, shorter game weeks maybe puts more emphasis on the attackers than on... So if you have, like, projection for two game weeks, it probably will say more solid than the defenders. I don't know. It would be interesting to see. It's sort of like a, trying to make a weighted, like, a weighted average of... Which of like the short parts or like the explosive parts you want in the long haul and try to find a good balance in there for such? I don't know. Yeah. That's sort of what I was uh, sitting thinking right now. Yeah. And, uh, it's cool because I just watched the community shield and there were certainly some doubts around, especially like uh, Liverpool defenders and Alexander Arnold. So you can just uh, change the number if you don't believe in a guy and uh, the whole uh, Excel. Uh, 
like formation will uh, change and, and consider your own opinion, which I haven't seen like, you know, in the FFX and Fantasy Scout. They're very fixed numbers. It's hard to, you just have to swallow them basically. And yeah. yeah, I've always wondered like, how um, how I can tweak them and uh, make it a useful thing. So I think we're onto something really good here. What do you say, Mitch? Are you gonna use it anytime soon, or you're going with the gut? <laughs> I, I, well, you know what I'm, I'm like with the, you know what gut you know what I'm like with the gut. But I do really like it. I do think it's really, I think it's really clever. Um, I think it's really really good for people that are newer as well. But, and then, but I do feel like the gut comes in for me, particularly when it's asking for three Liverpool players. Uh, in, in defence, and I'm just like, well, one goal kind of makes that from 18 down to six points, and that's a big hit. Um, but I think it's really clever. I'm, I'm actually very impressed. I'm kind of jealous that I can't do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> one thing I'd say is obviously, like, you're not beholden to the numbers that are in the sheet. So, like, you know, I, I appreciate what you mean. Like, you might even put in your own numbers, and it still might give you something that doesn't feel quite right. But certainly, if you're like, well, you know, what's, what are we projecting for this player? Hang on a minute, he's getting a lot of points. I'm not sure he's going to play that much. I'm, I'm, I'd rather take 20% off that and see what happens. Um, yeah. So you can kind of, I mean, it sort of feels like engineering it to get the team you want. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's the object, but, you know, it'll be interesting to see what, I've certainly done it a couple of times. I actually used it, um, so we have a league at work where we do the Sun, we have the format of the Sun Dream Team. And it actually benefits that format, I think, even better than ours because there's only three formations we can choose. Um, you only spend on the first 11 as well, so you don't have to think about a bench. And I, I kind of ran it a couple of times. It came out of the things I wasn't quite sure about. I, I changed a couple of players down. It was interesting to see then. I was like, oh, okay. So it's like, because you might think you might be smarter than me and not think this, but what I was thinking was like I was going to change um, I think it was like Alonso. I was going to change him down, and it would be like, well, I might as well have just looked at what the next defender at his price point was going to score, like the next best, and you'd put him in. But yet, quite often, I was changing that one player, and it was actually saying, well, don't just downgrade him. You're actually better off getting a defender that's 0.5 cheaper, and then a midfielder 0.5 more expensive. That will find the next most um, efficient combination. So, mm. yeah, there's it's, it's quite a lot to it that you can hopefully change to how you want to do it but also still kind of have it do a lot of the hard work for you. Yeah. Why I think like a prime example would be like, like last season when I was pretty hard on saying Salah out, Salah out all the time. And then I obviously would have weighted him down in the model. So just, just sort of keep him away. Another sort of... thing, I haven't thought about this yet, but based on what you've said there, Yogi, what I, other thing I might try and implement is um, almost having like a like a veto on a player. So rather than you having to go and weight it down, maybe have a, a, a list of players you can go, oh, I'm not having this player. You know, and that might also help you if you're a, um, if you're someone that is, if you're a Liverpool fan that doesn't want to have Everton players in or whatever, like you can just have a list of players and then it'll automatically not consider them. That should be something that's easy to implement. So potentially yeah. that's better than having to go and, I think there'll be value in people changing the projections to their own um, to their own ideas, but you know, if you just if you're just like I don't want this one player, it would probably be easier to have that on a on a simple list rather than having to go in and kind of try and downgrade his stats to the point that he wasn't showing up. Yeah. So uh, I guess um, we're not completely done with this. So I guess uh, it would be cool to hear some comments on uh, YouTube and Patreon and see if there's something obvious that we have missed and uh, yeah let the community decide basically how the sheet is uh, going to be tweaked and we'll see if sam can get there and if we like the ideas and uh, also please comment if you found our findings interesting would you consider three at the back uh, solely liverpool and like a pick for it is that a good option so I'm really excited to hear about uh, everyone's opinions. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, we'll do for now. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, have this one ready soon for everyone to access. Cool. Um, thanks for the lecture, Sam. I thought I was graduated. <laughs> no, we do this every week. I'm missing lectures, so this is yeah. great. <laughs> Have you guys got all your Have you guys got all your team names 
Has everyone got a team name? I think I'm still going for my picnic basket. Picnic basket. And I'm just picnic basket. I'm just going for my FPL gents, so everyone knows who's the world number one. It's us. <laughs> and, uh, no confusion, you know. <laughs> if not, you always have their classic. Uh, fair folks say, uh, how is it? Fair folks sake, are, are you blind? <laughs> well, I was gonna go for. I was gonna go for aerial FC. <laughs> aerial detergent FC or something like that. <laughs> Sponsor me now, FC. <laughs> Please, yeah, sponsor me now, FC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's like a good. Uh, you can just you can just name. Yeah, have you seen that, Yogi? Or did you come up with that? I saw someone like having this the best game week of everyone in the world, you know. And he said like, uh, contact me for sponsorship or something. That's funny. Uh, that's smart. <laughs> yeah. Sam always comes up with a good team name as well. And he's uh, like, uh, cre- creative about it. I think. Yeah, I, I'm struggling this year. I'm, I try to, I like to have it as someone who's in my team. And my team is not a lot of very good, punny guys. So at the moment, I'm on Siggy Stardust. But I, could, it's um, good. I like it. Luke. It might change. I so, spend more time thinking about that than I do my team, unfortunately. Yeah. You always have the chicken tikka msala. Chicken yeah, I like it to yeah. be original. I like it to be my own work. That's the only thing. Yeah. But uh, that that was one of my favourites from last year, and then the one I ended up with, which was um, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, there were some good <laughs> ones. Oh, well, that's some rough one. One of those that I like is, uh, you know, the um, player in Barcelona, Busquets. Uh, his name was T and Busquets. Nice. <laughs> T and I've Busquets. got one for um, I've got one for Mitch actually. Good. Uh, to celebrate your new strike, it uh, you could have a uh, Halibut Girls. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take that. How can you pass up on that? <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> I'm always writing down the the, tr- the new transfers because they're the ones that are going to be original. So I'm like, they're they're the first one of my first go tos. It's true. Slammy Tammies. Where did you catch, where did you end up in um, the Women's World Cup uh, thing? I uh, finished fourth in the end, oh. um, which I was annoyed about because they literally sent me an email a day after the last round closed being like, oh, we're just, we need to get your details because we're paying out prizes for the top three. But by that point, I'd gone like full, uh, full, uh, what do you call it? Like differential tinker because I was like, oh, really? I don't care about being third. Like I want to be number one. Yeah, yeah. So... I got in a lot of. Um, I think if the USA hadn't conceded against England in the semi, I would have won the whole thing because I basically went like they didn't have the restrictions on number of players per team, so I had. Uh, I think I played five at the back. My goalie was American, and I had four American defenders, and I captained one of them. Um, <laughs> but my captain also went off at half time in the final. So yes, close. If I. There was one player that if I'd captained in the quarterfinal, I would have won the whole thing. Um, I captained one of my fullbacks and the other one got like 20-something points. That would have been enough, even with my differential monster last week. But yeah, it was a good uh, good experience. Good it, was meant, it was meant to be fun and take my mind off it. And then obviously, because I actually did well, it was more stressful than anything I've ever done in FPL. But there you go. <laughs> yeah, how do you read up? How do you like research those women? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, there was a massive thread on Reddit, which was pretty much all I used to build my team from the start. And then, I mean, I watched, to be fair, I watched like nearly every game. So as it was going on, I felt like I was, I was learning. And like, there, it was one of those things as well, where I think the rules, this is the thing about FPL as well, like just reading the rules is important. Like their assists were I think it was like two points for an assist versus five points for a clean sheet, which is, you know, one down and one up from FPL. Mm. So a lot of people were going in like big in midfield. And I was like, but you're getting like no points for assists. And you used to, and I think you got like one point for three successful crosses or something. So if you literally, I just picked fullbacks and because they were getting, when they were playing the bad teams, they were putting so many crosses in. They were already on a baseline of five for clean sheets. And it was like, 
people didn't catch on to it early on, which is I think why I managed to get out and in, like into the front pack quite easily. But yeah, it's interesting. It's nice, nice to do something a bit different. 